Roof Together, an online service, May 2nd, 2021. A people of story. We are our stories. We tell them to stay alive or keep alive those who only live now in the telling. Niall Williams. Today's welcome is from Kenny Anderson. Hello, and welcome to the service of the Rogue Valley Unitarian Universalist Fellowship, which we affectionately call ROOF. My name is Kenny Anderson, and I have the honor of serving our ROOF Worship Committee. On this occasion, we'll examine the many ways we are a people of stories, each of us with an amazing story to tell, stories of our pilgrimage to our UU faith, to this loving fellowship, stories that bring us here today in the sacred presence of one another, forging the bonds of love and friendship here in this very moment. What a treasure we have today in the listening and the telling and learning of our stories. While we long for that happy day when we can meet once again in person with hugs and songs, we are nevertheless grateful that our online gatherings connects us and con continues to keep the mission of Roof and our UU faith before us in our lives and in the world. Each week when we meet, we are mindful the land on which we live is the traditional home of the Cow Creep Umpqua, the Takalma, the Shasta, and Latgawa people. We remind ourselves that indigenous people are part of our communities and that they continue to experience the effects of colonization and conquest. We are committed to fighting for the worth and dignity of indigenous people here in our community and around the world. We also commit ourselves to the ongoing work for a world in which the lives, work, bodies, dreams, and leadership of black people are honored and respected. We remind ourselves once again that we must put our words and our principles into action every day for justice and the common good. Welcome. We are so glad that you can be with us here this morning. Our chalice lighting words are by Reverend Dr. David Breeden. We kindle this flame opening the book, turning to a page yet to be written, opening to a story yet to be told. May we fill the fresh page wisely. May we write a new story into being. May we, together, inscribe the page with hope. Every first Sunday, we take an extra offering to support the Ashland Emergency Food Bank. The food bank was founded 45 years ago by a group of churches who believed that no one in our community should go to bed hungry. They pooled their efforts from their individual congregations and began distributing food to people in need. Over the decades, much has changed. The food bank serves many more people and the numbers continue to rise each year. They are now an independent nonprofit organization that owns and operates their own building. But one thing remains constant, the mission. That is to provide food free of charge to residents of Ashland, Talent, and surrounding rural communities, and to do so in a way that conveys respect and dignity for those being served. To donate to the Ashland Emergency Food Bank, you can send a check to Ashland Emergency Food Bank or AEFB Post Office Box 3578 Ashland, Oregon 97520 or you can give online at ashlandefb.org slash 
donations. Thank you so much for your generous gifts. Our opening song is Forgiveness by Anomaly Brennett.
Our peace candle words are by Reverend Lynn Cox. Come, you accidental pilgrims, you who find yourself on a journey of surprise and wonder. Come, you who emerge into this place as an act of liberation. Come, you who seek courage, and you who have more courage than you realize. Come, you who are still gathering up the resources to claim your truth. We begin our story again, gathering courage, love, mindfulness, and a sense of purpose. This path will ask much from us. Let us move forward with love. Peace, salam, shalom. Peace, salam, shalom. Peace, salam, shalom. Peace, salam, shalom. Somewhere in the world, there was a child and their grandparent sheltering in place, just like you are now. And they were really fed up, perhaps a bit like you are sometimes. The novelty of being at home all the time and doing whatever they wanted had worn off for the child, and they felt bored. For the grandparent, it was less a feeling of boredom and more a feeling of hopelessness weighing them down. They watched TV for hours, though how many hours remained a mystery. They had stopped keeping track of time, really. The days all blurred together, and they felt they had been doing this for so long. And then one day, when the child accidentally sat on the remote control after getting more snacks and the TV accidentally turned off, there was something new reflected in the black screen of the powered down TV. The child and their grandparent turned around to look out their window and find the source of the reflection that they could see in the TV. And there in the house across the road from them was a piece of paper taped to the window. And on that paper was a colorfully drawn rainbow. Well, this was something new, something unexpected and bright and cheery. The child and the grandparent turned to one another knowingly, grinning. In a flash, the child retrieved a sheet of paper and crayons and began to draw a rainbow while the grandparent fetched the tape. A moment later, they gazed upon their window with pride. Their rainbow shone back across the street, joyfully mirroring their neighbor's rainbow. What happened next was like magic. Every day, more cheerful rainbows appeared in more windows, all up and down the street. The child and their grandparent gleefully drew rainbows for every window in the house, watching their neighbors doing the same red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and all manner of other colors burst forth, seeming to shine through the windows, a cacophony of color. But the people didn't stop there. They continued to draw. Rainbows were taped to neighbors' doors, slipped into mailboxes. They were sent to care homes, to beloved elders who couldn't have visitors. Rainbows were left tucked under the windshield wipers of Uber drivers' cars. They were left out for delivery folks. People made rainbows to send to hospitals scrawled with messages of gratitude and admiration for everyone working to help the sick. 
from the doctors and nurses to the custodial staff and maintenance workers. Stockers working hard in grocery stores found paper rainbows between cans of beans and corn left waiting on the shelves where the toilet paper was sold out. Now, families on solitary walks around the city go rainbow hunting. The child and their grandparent like to do this too, taking paper with them to write down all the places they see rainbows hanging. The empty school, the corner store, windows of brownstone homes, even hanging from the balconies 15 stories up. They make a list of all the rainbows emerging, logging each place where the colors shine into the empty streets. By now, you've probably figured out that this story is true. It's really happening all over the world. Folks have come together in spirit while physically distanced to lovingly reassure one another with brilliant colors. The rainbows are beautiful and to see them alone is a joy, but they carry with them a promise. Rainbows shine as a reminder of hope. We are in this together. The storm will end and we will come out on the other side. Please take a slow, easy breath and center yourself to the song We Belong by Nomaly Brennett. Here's to all the tough girls And here's to all the sensitive boys We belong And here's to all the rejects And here's to all the misfits We belong Here's to all the brains and the geeks And here's to all the made-up freaks Yeah We belong And when the same old voices say That we'd be better off running away We belong, we belong All the mistakes and the blunders We belong And here's to all the fashion don'ts And here's to all the Friday night home alones We belong And when the same old voices say that we'd be better off running away We belong, we belong anyway
Our offering words are by Sir Terry Pratchett. Change the story. Change the world. You can change someone's story by giving, and you can give by mail, by sending your gift to Roof at 87 4th Street, Ashland, Oregon, 97520. Or you can give online at tinyurl.org slash roof offering. You can also give by texting the amount you'd like to give to 541-229-4229. So if you'd like to give $100, simply text 100 to that number. If you need help during these difficult times, Contact Rev. Sean using the form on our website, roof.org. We will do our best to help. For these gifts, and all the gifts you bring to our community and to the world, thank you. Our reading is Telling by Laura Hershey, read by Kenny Anderson. A reading is called Telling by Laura Hershey. What you risk telling your story. You will bore them. Your voice will break. Your ink will spill and stain your coat. No one will understand. Their eyes become fences. You will park yourself forever on the outside, your differentness once and for all revealed dangerous. The names you give to yourself will become epithets. Your happiness will be called bravery, denial. Your sadness will justify their pity. Your fear will magnify their fears. Everything you say will prove something about their God or their economic system. Your feelings that change day to day, kaleidoscopic, will freeze in place. Brand you forever. Justify anything they decide to do with you. Those with power can afford to tell their story or not. Those without power risk everything to tell their story, and they must. Somewhere, someone will hear your story and decide to fight, to live, and to refuse to compromise. Someone else will tell her own story, risking everything. Our sharing today is A People of Story by Reverend Sean. I'm excited about this month's theme, being a people of story. Not one single story that we all have to believe, but stories, our own story, each of us living and changing and telling and retelling our stories. Not only that, but shifting the stories that we have believed for so long and that seem to keep us stuck in a culture of greed and inequality and sometimes even hate. If what Sir Terry Pratchett said is true and by changing the story, we can change the world, imagine what's possible if we intend to be a people of stories. The stories Namely Brennett tells in her songs are stories like that, stories that go from brokenness to forgiveness, from bullying to belonging, and take us to a place where the last can be the next in line. Our congregation can be a place where people can tell their true stories, if we commit ourselves to listening without judging. 
We can be that kind of place because of our theology, which values and welcomes pluralism, where people are believed when they tell the truth about their lives. We can be a place that's inclusive. More than that, a place that invites and celebrates many varied stories. We can even be a place where our stories change. And when they change, they change us and even the world. Stories that make us afraid, that make us smaller than we really are, or that have been used to justify treating other people as if they were less important or valuable. We can change the stories of self by engaging deeply in the responsible search for truth and meaning. And sometimes we can help change the stories that taught others to be insecure, fearful, or even mean. And if we do that, we change people's worlds. Changing the stories about what is most important in life and in our neighborhoods, communities, and culture can help us restore them and make them places where we value every person and care for each other and take care of the earth, our home. I want to share one more story with you because it's a story that brings me great hope for each of us and for our congregations and for the world. It's called The Broken Story Story and it's by Reverend Christina Leon Tracy. Once upon a time, there was a man with a story. This was an any once upon a time story, not one you could find on a bookshelf or here around the campfire. This was his story and no one else's. The story had been carefully crafted. It began before he was even born and this story told of his loves and his fears, his dreams realized, and his dreams yet to come. This story was complete. It told his whole life, including those bits that still existed only in his imagination. In fact, the story was so complete and he was so happy with his story that he carried it around with him to make sure it was safe. It was somewhat bulky and unwieldy, but he didn't mind. It was his story. The thing about this story, though, was it was very fragile. Made up of many pieces and held together by only his own imagination, he was worried it might break apart at any moment. And so he grew more and more protective of his story. He held it even closer. And as he went about his life, he checked on the story to make sure he was following it correctly. He avoided adventure and the unknown because, well, they might break his story. And then one day, the inevitable happened. Without warning, his story broke. It was unforeseen and he hadn't done anything wrong at all, but there it was laying in a thousand shattered pieces on the ground with the sunlight glinting off the bits of story he had so carefully protected for all those years. He was heartbroken. And since his story hadn't said to put the pieces back together, he was at a loss. What now? He sat down next to the pile of pieces and cried. A while later, Maybe it was minutes, maybe it was hours. A group of people came out of a nearby building and saw him sitting on the sidewalk, surrounded by a pile of broken pieces, clearly in need of help. What happened here? One asked. My story, it's gone. I worked so hard to build it, to protect it, to keep it from harm, and now it's gone. Gone, he wailed. Is this the story here? Another asked. Yes, look at it. There's nothing left of it. It looks like it's here. Not gone, said a child. We just have to put it back together. Put it back together? There's no way. You don't even know what it looked like. How will you put it back together if you don't even know me? 
The child was tenacious. Don't worry, with all of us here to help, we'll put it back together in a way that you would never even expect. You never know, it might be more beautiful than before. And so they swept up the pieces of the man's story carefully and went together into the building from which they had emerged. They poured him some hot coffee and sang a song he'd never heard before. Something about coming again and again though you've broken your vows a thousand times. The song was soothing and the coffee was warm. He began to feel hope again that his story could be put back together. It took a long time. Maybe it was days, maybe it was years, but they got it all back together. They added new parts and some old parts didn't fit anymore, but that was okay. The child had been right. It was more beautiful than before. And this time, the story was held together not only by his imagination, but the imagination and support of an entire community. It wasn't nearly so fragile and it even allowed for adventure. This month, as we explore what it means to be a people of stories, let us be open to change and adventure, to transformation. And may that transformation occur within us and among us, and may it spread like rainbows to bring hope and joy and comfort to the world. May it be so. May we be the ones to make it so. Amen. Ashe. And blessed be. Our closing song is Till the Last is the Next by Namely Bremet. Hold me
Our closing words are adapted from Reverend Sherry Woodbury. May we have the courage to speak or write the stories that need to be told. May we listen with a loving mind and heart to the stories of others, be they close and familiar or those far from our experience. Let us choose with care the stories we teach our children, remembering that stories have power and that all of our stories are connected, for all life is one. You are invited to our Zoom coffee hour at 11.30 a.m. Pacific each Sunday. Visit roof.org to sign up for our mailing list to receive details on how to join our Zoom room each week.